this was a bullish retest of the top side of that trend and we basically holding our third high alone continuing on up hello everyone today popular trader and financial analyst kyla dupes explains the biggest news in the crypto sector as the largest asset manager of the world blackrock applied for bitcoin adf the effect on the bitcoin price the regulatory fears in the crypto world and much more if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto bitcoin and stocks hit that subscribe button now join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success don't miss out subscribe like and share today bitcoin the world's largest cryptocurrency hit a more than one year high on friday capping a week of gains helped in part by blackrock's blkm plans to create a Bitcoin exchange-traded fund, ETF, despite heightened U.S. regulatory scrutiny on the digital asset sector. BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager, filed last week to launch a shares Bitcoin Trust, an ETF that would have Coinbase custody as its custodian, as well as offer institutional investors exposure to the SIPTA currency. Crypto exchange EDX markets, backed by investment firms Charles Schwab, Fidelity and Citadel Securities, also announced earlier this week that it will allow trading on some cryptocurrencies. The moods have revived investor interest in cryptocurrencies, which have been in the doldrums after a series of crypto company meltdowns, including the sudden collapse of exchange FTX late last year. Compounding negative sentiment has been increased regulatory scrutiny, including the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's move this month to sue crypto giants Coinbase Global, COINO, and Binance, alleging violation of its rules. The pair deny the allegations. Bitcoin has gained nearly 25% in value since BlackRock's filing. It rose as high as $31,458 on Friday, the highest level since June 7, 2022, and was last up 3.29% at $30,872. The dark clouds overshadowing crypto have lifted in recent days amid a burst of institutional interest. So if you do have a look at this infographic over here, it shows the institutions and how much equity they hold, how much assets under management they're currently working with. So BlackRock at 9.6 trillion, Vanguard at 8.1 trillion and Fidelity at 4.2 trillion. So a very, very hopium type of show, at least for the first half, and then we'll get into the reality of the low timeframes and what's going on there. But essentially what you'll be looking at over here is a potential for institutional FOMO. And that's what they always spoke of years ago when they spoke of Bitcoin entering what they call hyper-Bitcoinization, whereby Bitcoin starts to eat up all other asset classes. So you can see over here with the speculation and rumor that Fidelity have now officially also filed for a Bitcoin ETF. You have them and BlackRock. And the big thing over here is that once one of them get approved, then the rest will just replicate that exact same process. And you're talking about trillions of dollars potentially entering into the crypto market. These are the already the companies which have already filed for ETFs. And you can look over here, the list is long and extensive. And these are some of them haven't been approved yet. They're still under review and some of which have been rejected. So keep in mind that when the first Bitcoin ETF does get approved, then they're going to replicate the exact same process and reapply again. And you're talking about a lot of new money coming into the market. And what does that timeline look like? Well, if you look here at uh, Vetla Lunda, uh, they say via the ETF timeline, does anyone remember how the VanEck deadline coincided with the launch of Bitcoin Taproot? We only need miners to mine harder and the SEC to regulate a little bit slower. And then we're in for yet another major catalyst galore in quarter one, 2024. Important iShares process uh, for now being estimated, meaning that basically you would be looking for an approval denial on these ETFs by February of 2024. So very, very interesting. And Travis says over here, lots of chatter on this BlackRock Bitcoin ETF, and rightfully so, BlackRock more or less is the US government now. They've also received approval on 575 out of the 576 of ETF applications. We did cover that yesterday. One thing I'll say though, which is interesting, there's no chance, and I mean zero, that this ETF is gonna be approved with Binance in its current position of market dominance. 
if this ETF is approved, Binance is either gone entirely or their role in price discovery is massively diminished. If Binance holds on to its current level of influence, there's just no chance that this ETF will be approved. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about that statement? Do you think that what Travis is saying over here is valid? Do you think that this is one massive game of chess and the US government are playing 5D chess. Remember, they hold a, a lot of Bitcoin as well and they have the potential to manipulate the market. So let's have a look at the next tweet over here uh, where they analyze that and he says, I see this as the main counterpoint to the BlackRock spot ETF narrative. If the regulatory web is so corrupt and to wait to approve to, uh, the spot ETF until BlackRock and Fidelity are ready to swoop and steal the market, it's very unlikely to allow BTC to pump with Binance still in control. There's probably a potential future path where Binance is hit really hard in the coming weeks. Remember, US government sells the coins, equities might nuke, and crypto revisits the lows, and then the market goes up only as the spot ETF launches and trade fight takes the pie from Binance. So it is an interesting theory, and I think not many people are focusing on the possibility of something like that happening on traditional finance pulling back and the US government deploying the coins that they have to drive the price of the market down whilst taking market share away from Binance. So if you look at the, <clears throat> the visualized analysis over here of the Bitcoin supply, then we have brought this chart up before. You can see over here, uh, look at the visual depiction. This is the Bitcoin held by exchanges, right? And you'll notice this is actually one of the bigger shares, which shows you how much would have to be taken off the market, right? They're, where are they going to get, if these ETFs get approved, where are they going to get the spot Bitcoin from? Uh, they're probably going to try and get it from the exchanges. So these are the zombie coins with Satoshi stash unmoved. These are the coins owned by Satoshi. Then you got the grayscale coins over here. You got the BTC, which is, gets mined per year. Very, very minuscule in comparison to what the uh, exchanges are holding. And then if you look over here, the Bitcoin sees from the plus token scam, Mount Gox coins that are still in their custody, MicroStrategy coins over here. Um, and then you start to move on to the smaller amount over here, which is the 94,000 BTC seized by US authorities from the Bitfinex hack. So if the US were to try and nuke the market, they would have to pretty much dump all of these 94,000 coins into a strong level of support. That support gets lost. And then ultimately the market starts to panic and the Bitcoin ETF comes about and basically exchanges start to lose their market share. Maybe they start to buy their coins off of them. So here you can have a look at the GBTC chart and you can see basically these were the lows, right? In December, uh, when we're basically negative 48%. And now you can see a marked tick up over here. And if the GBTC premium starts to, well, moves from a discount back towards a premium above the zero line, that also could be one of the catalysts towards a potential bull run. Um, I know a lot of people spoke about the uh, bull run only returning once the GBTC premium returns. So very, very interesting because that incentivizes institutions who would want exposure into crypto uh, to get into the market if they start to see that discount closing towards a premium. And we, we know that we need some institutions institutional demand into the market. And if you look over at the Bitcoin hash rate, uh, as Will Clemente says, why won't this Bitcoin thing die? It just keeps on grinding up. And you can correlate that. I thought this was a nice meme. Memes are powerful. The US debt ceiling at 32.7 trillion versus the Bitcoin hash rate and basically kind of moving in unison with each other. Uh, this lady says they're the same picture over here. So Bitcoin is looking strong. The fundamentals look strong. Bitcoin hash rates continuing up and we're approaching the halving cycle, which is going to be coming up in just a couple of months time in line with all of this sides. But if you do look here at the hash rate, right? The hash ribbons indicator did signal a buy signal, which took place um, right over here at a Bitcoin price of about 18, between 18 and 19,000 is when that blue buy signal fired off. And since it's been holding the trend, right? You also have the MVRVZ score, which when it leaves out of the green zone area over here, every single time historically in the past, that has, in, that has been indicative that major reaccumulation is taking place and the market is slowly starting to drift sideways and upwards, right? Sideways and upwards. And it, even if you come back, you can see we have been trending back towards that green area. This is also 
common. This has happened in the past. As long as it doesn't break back into the green zone, then you would expect that this trend would continue. And you can see the price action over here, right? Very clear chart. You have your main range. This was essentially what led to the breakdown. That was our range high. We were looking for a retest into that range high. And now the main question, the burning question has been, is this just a bullish retest of the top of that range, which is coming in over here at $25,000? Or is it a deviation back into the range? A deviation back into the range would look something like that. And then you'd be looking towards the mid-range level, which would be over here. And if you lose that, then you can potentially come all the way back down to the bottom of the range. So I don't think that we yet have that answer, but we're very, very close. From a timing perspective, by the end of this week, we should know uh, with high confidence whether this was a bullish retest of the top side of that trend. And we basically holding our third high alone, continuing on up, or if we are in fact deviating back into the range. So it's really decision time. But the good news is that you're not too late. In the greater scheme of things, if the market is flipping bullish, then you're not too late. There is a lot of uh, um, still time to be in the market. Um, and this is really just the beginning phases. So uh, definitely stay tuned and uh, continue to remain focused because the market has a way of wearing you down as well. Let's look at the Bitcoin monthly returns. So according to the history of Bitcoin, how has Bitcoin mostly performed in the month of July? You can see July is mostly a transitionary month. We almost finished with June. Uh, so let's, let's forget June and look towards July. July is where the market slowly starts to flip green. August has been mostly a green month. And then your big, big green months are going to be January, February, March, October, and November. So basically, there is a lot to look forward to with September being only a negative 1.7% uh, uh, month, meaning that after your August pumps, your July August pumps, you hopefully consolidate. Remember, this is a lot of hopium over there for the bulls. So we are looking at the history and the data. And if history were to repeat, then the bulls do have a slight edge over here from a timing perspective. But markets are more complex than that, right? Uh, although they rhyme, the history does rhyme. It's not always exactly the same. And therefore, you need to make educated financial decisions, right? Don't forget to hit that like button to show your support and share our videos with your fellow enthusiasts. Together, let's navigate the exciting world of finance and achieve remarkable success. Thank you.